two minutes to touchdown. 1,000. Checked. Checked. At 1,000 feet, co-pilot Tobias disables the autopilot. I know flight. For the first time since takeoff, the pilots are flying the plane purely on manual. They're sitting seven meters above and 36 meters in front of the first rubber that will hit the runway. So a radar scanner constantly warns them of their true altitude. 400. The point of no return is 200 feet. If Captain Joe can't see the runway lights then, he must abort the landing. 200, minimum. Continue. Brain scans of pilots flying simulators reveal that during these final stages of landing, one particular area of the brain lights up. The bilateral chordate nucleus, a structure responsible for finely controlled eye movement and fast decision making. During a tricky landing, this area goes into overdrive. Rarely more so than when in a crosswind. As wind buffets the plane, the pilot's brain must fight to maintain control of up to 390 tons of aircraft. Using the rudder pedals and stick, the pilot makes minute adjustments. Their bilateral chordate nucleus coordinating all these movements. 20 seconds to touchdown for flight LH761. Fortunately, there are no crosswinds for the pilot's brains to battle. 30 feet above the runway, co-pilot Tobias performs the most delicate maneuver of the entire seven-hour flight, the flare. With a gentle pullback on the stick, he's aiming to slow the descent and make a smooth landing. Too much pull, and he'll generate too much lift, and the aircraft won't land. Too little, and the plane will slam into the concrete. Finding the perfect balance is the final test of the pilot's control. For each landing, it's lots of uh, feeling you need how and when to start your flare. But if you summarize it, either you are too late, too early, or you're exactly right. 40, 30, 20, retard. Tobias cuts the engine thrust. And at 240 kilometers an hour, the giant aircraft inches down. Yeah. 